Okay, welcome to uh, a guide as promised on how to set up your PC to listen to you uh, to control XBMC with your voice. Uh, so this is a fairly unscripted demonstration so you have to forgive me. I've made some notes as to the things I think we need to go through. Uh, so I'm going to start there. So first off you're already going to need to have XBMC installed on your computer and set up. So you need to ensure you've labelled all your videos correctly and XBMC correctly recognises them as movies and as television shows uh, to get the most out of Vox Commando. Uh, you're going to need either a cheap microphone near you or an expensive microphone otherwise. So if you've got a microphone that's very close to you, uh, I found it didn't matter how cheap it was. I had one by the side of my bed for a good couple of months uh, and I used Vox Commando uh, very happily and in fact did my video demonstration with a very very cheap microphone, literally cost me about £5 uh, from a local hardware store. Uh, I've since replaced it with a more expensive microphone so that Vox Commando has a better chance of recognising me from across the room. Um, okay, so the first thing you're going to want to do is train Windows to understand you better first of all. Uh, Vox Commando is reliant on Windows speech recognition's engine. Uh, so I found the easiest way to find that is to hit, hit up the search bar and type in speech uh, and go into uh, believe it or not, the easiest way I've found to get to it is to go to change text to speech settings and to then actually go to the speech recognition tab. From there you can click on train profile uh, and you can create different profiles as well. And you can also check the uh, microphone level here uh, and configure your microphone so that your microphone will pick up uh, the best of your voice before you start to train it. Uh, when you start to train it, it's a really straightforward wizard that's going to walk you through it. Uh, I will point out, actually, I forgot to mention, if anyone wants a guide on how to set XBMC up, uh, I'm quite happy to walk you through that. Uh, I just figured we'd jump straight into the actual voice command stuff, as I think the majority of the people that were interested already had the ability uh, to use XBMC, uh, and were using probably a remote or their Android mobile phone to control it. Um, so if anyone wants that guide, just drop me a comment, and I shall, uh, I shall look into doing that. Uh, the actual voice command side, though, moving on. Uh, so once you've uh, configured Windows to better understand your voice, once you've trained her, you'll need to install Vox Commando from voxcommando.com forward slash downloads dot ASP. Uh, so this is the genius in Canada, uh, his website, he's the one that made this software. Uh, I am not a genius, I am a very straightforward person, that was the whole point of this guide really, was that I'm fairly good at using software. Uh, I'm fairly good at manipulating things if they're already in place. Uh, I am not a programmer, I am not a hugely clever man. The guy that created this is an utter genius. Uh, I'm sure if he's watching this he's blushing and calling me a stupid Englishman. Um, he's been incredibly helpful on the forums and I'm sure it'll be hel hel helpful to you too. Uh, if you want my help feel free to leave me a comment. Uh, I'm also on the forum from time to time uh, but usually being generally selfish uh, I am a part of the community, uh, but I have very little to offer to it. I only have uh, the ability to take. So this is my way of giving up, uh, giving back, I guess, to the community. It's trying to get some more people involved. Um, so from there, you just download Vox Commando. Uh, so I have about 20 meg of broadband, so it should only take a little while for it to come down. There we go. Uh, if you then launch that executable file and hit run as you would any other piece of software uh, the first thing to note is that you do not want to install this on a system folder that equals bad according to James uh, it doesn't work um, do not install it on a system folder so you need to browse for your destination folder uh, I for this example have created one uh, on my desktop called Vox Commando demonstration folder ready to go uh, just create your own and um, stick it somewhere where it's going to be easy enough to get to because you want, you're want you going to want to be able to get here to do your programming um, to begin with um, and you can bury it later if you want to so I'm going to select that folder hit OK and then click install and there we go it's as simple as that you get your usual readme which uh, gives you a little bit of information some of which I'm going to be covering in this video anyway uh, so if I go back to my desktop now, I've got my Vox Commando demonstration folder there with all the installation uh, in there. So these are all the things that Vox Commando references uh, when it's running. Uh, this is your Vox Commando EXE. I just create a shortcut on my desktop 
Uh, I also put it in my startup folder in Windows so that when Windows starts up it auto automatically starts Vox Commando for me. It also starts Event Ghost. Uh, I can either cover off Event Ghost in a separate um, demonstration if you guys want it or you can figure it out yourself, you may already have it or you might not need it, I suppose it depends how far you're planning to go into the implementation. Uh, Vox Commando in itself has the majority of what you need. So if I launch Vox Commando EXE from there it asks me to agree uh, the license agreement uh, and you want to select English XBMC.zip for obvious reasons. You need to install English XBMC version of Vox Commando. Uh, there are other things that you can control with Vox Commando and in other languages too um, but I'm assuming you're English and you want to use XBMC so I'm going to use this configuration. Uh, and this is Vox Commando. It'll ask you to allow access through your firewall, which you'll need to, of course, do. Uh, and this is Vox Commando in its simplest form. It's listening to me right now. Um, if I hit the red button here, she'll stop listening to me altogether and switch off. Uh, she is now not listening to anything, um, so I couldn't wake her up with my voice. This is the standby function where you could wake her up with your voice. Uh, so she's already programmed for controlling lots of different XBMC functions uh, by the genius that is James. So if you go into edit you'll see there's a whole big tree there of uh, different commands um, that have already been programmed for you. So it doesn't get much more simple than that. I'm going to show you my Vox commando um, though so I can show you the different commands that I've implemented. Um, so I'm going to close this uh, instance of Vox Commando and open up the one on my desktop. Uh, so the one on my desktop is linked to uh, my Vox Commando folder which has got all of my uh, presets in. She's just loading up now and she's now listening. Uh, so she'll stop listening to me um, in just a few seconds and that's because in the options here that's what I've set. Uh, so idle time out there is 11 seconds. I chose 11 because that seemed to be the longest command I would want to give her. Uh, usually if I was trying to browse to a particular TV show, um, my command might take... It probably wouldn't take 11 seconds, but it was the shortest amount of time I could think um, I would need. Um, and the longest amount of time I could think I would need for some of the commands. So these are your options. Uh, this is where you can set a different text-to-speech voice if you have the, such an ability. If you've got any text-to-speech voices installed on your computer, they'll appear here and you can choose them. Uh, I think hopefully in the later versions of Vox Commando, choosing one of these voices will work for you. Uh, it didn't immediately for me and I discovered later on it's because uh, Kate was actually Mary and Mary was Kate and Susan was Ludovico. and. Uh, so every time I was trying to switch to Kate and I was getting the usual boring Microsoft voice because they were the ones that were swapped over in the background uh, I was thinking the installation for Kate hadn't worked properly and I reinstalled Kate and it all went a bit nightmarish hopefully you won't have that problem I think the later versions probably have solved that um, you can have uh, an automatic user prefix and put in a name in there uh, I haven't done that I've actually put the prefix into my listen command um, and I, I don't use this. This is what you would use if you just wanted it to be uh, as little programming as possible, I suppose. And by programming, don't get nervous. As I said at the beginning, I'm not an intelligent man, trust me. Uh, so you can change various options here, uh, and most of them are to you probably want to leave as default. Uh, the required confidence you will want to adjust for your microphone um, in accordance to how often she mishears you, uh, doesn't hear you at all. Uh, and implements commands you haven't really said. Uh, amusingly, my if I switch Vox Commando to be listening to my partner's trained voice profile, uh, she has a much whinier, high-pitched voice than I do, uh, and you'll find that my ukulele, in fact, triggers Vox Commando to do all sorts of odd things with switching lights on um, <laughs> and various other stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you might want to alter the confidence level there at a base level. You can alter the confidence of each command, and I'll show you that shortly. Uh, under advanced, this is where you'd alter the event ghost port. Again, I'm not going to cover off event ghost in this particular demonstration, but I can do in a separate demonstration if you wish. Uh, just drop me a comment. 
so uh, you've got various other options here for uh, Windows Media Center which I haven't implemented uh, XBMC which the ports will be by default 8080 uh, and should work immediately unless you've altered the points port in XBMC uh, I had a problem at some point which meant I had to alter the ports and so I've changed mine to 2340 uh, it works just the same way, you just have to go into XBMC and alter the port number in there to uh, to what you have accordingly in Vox Commando. Uh, under System, I've not really altered anything in here, I don't think. I think it takes you into the, uh, the different places where you can alter Windows speech recognition and um, Windows text-to-speech and that sort of thing. Uh, Gmail, which I haven't managed to get to work, I haven't bothered with it. Uh, events I've not really used and plugins again you're probably not going to use until later on when you start to get bored of uh, the magic that is XBMC and you want to try and get even more out of your computer and you want her to, to tell you what the weather's like and that sort of thing uh, you might come in here and add some plugins uh, the weather plugin is particularly uh, interesting uh, but we'll come back to that okay this is Paul Hibbert from the future I've just gone back in time to uh, to tell you about this next feature because I totally forgot to do it the first time around uh, and so if you want uh, XBMC and Vox Commando to work together properly you're going to have to tell Vox Commando about your media collection uh, so Vox Commando by default doesn't know that you've got Big Daddy the movie on your PC uh, you need to tell it that you do uh, now fortunately that doesn't take a lot of doing there's this little option here called generate XML uh, and you click generate XBMC uh, and she's now literally going and looking at all the media in XBMC and adding it to her vocabulary so that the next time I say I want to watch Big Daddy she'll go and put Big Daddy on for me she won't be able to do that unless she knows it's there uh, there are Vox Commando uh, voice recognition actions that you can create to do this at the with your voice so you can say refresh the database and she'll go away and do that as well um, and I've built a command that does both that uh, and gets XBMC to refresh its database so it looks on uh, in my watched folders for any new movies or any new television so it does both things simultaneously um, so again if you want the XML for that just give me a shout in the comments and I shall send you the XML quite happily uh, or walk you through how, how to do it yourself uh, okay, um, I'm now going to go back to the future uh, and leave you with past Paul. Alright, bye bye. This is actually Paul Hibbert from the uh, the further future. You might say I'm now editing my video for YouTube and realising I'm approaching 15 minutes. Um, so I'm not going to hand you back to uh, past Paul, I'm going to hand you back to future future Paul who is now actually going to stop the video and tell you you need to switch to part 2 uh, because my account doesn't let me do more than 15 minutes at a time. Bye bye.